Hey y'all, Nick here. In this video, we're gonna go through configuring a rocket pool node. So us here at Long Island Blockchain, we are experimenting with setting up a staking node, um, which we'd like to stake ourselves and we'd like to experiment with how we can offer other staking services. So the first step is to actually set up a, a staking pool ourselves and Rocket Pool, which is an interesting project that makes it really easy for you to set up the different nodes that you're going to need in order to, to create a staking pool. It also has some interesting um, features in terms of being able to put up a, a smaller amount of ETH than you're normally required to run a full node um, and be able to get additional rewards on, um, on staking. So it's, it's something that is attracted to us and I just wanted to go ahead and record setting this up. So a couple of things to note, I, I already have a server set up on my network. I went through, I, I updated that, I secured it um, and I'm able to access it now over SSH. So this is a Linux machine and to do some of this stuff, you do need to be somewhat familiar with Linux. So just keep that in mind as I go through this. But as you're going to see, the Rocket Pool project and the folks behind Rocket Pool have really done a great job putting together uh, an easy to use setup for setting up different nodes. So with ETH2 now upon us, we, you know, the Ethereum network is now a proof of stake network. We do have two different, um, two different nodes, two different pieces of software that we need to run in order to, to maintain a, uh, a staking node. That is the consensus layer and the execution layer. In ETH1, there was just an execution layer. So this process is gonna take us through setting up both of those layers and it's using Docker, which for those of you that are uh, familiar with that, Docker is a way to containerize software and keep it, make it pretty easy to, to manage to some degree. Um, so I already have Rocket Pool installed. It was a super simple, just wget or curl down from their website and I was able to go ahead and grab grab the software onto our system. So I'm gonna go ahead and SSH into our staker node here. And then all we have to do is run rocket pool service config. Now this is a fresh install. I'm gonna hit enter here, and this is gonna take us through a cool little wizard here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit, say next. It's going, to, it's going to ask us what network we wanna go ahead and do this on. Um, we can set this up on a test net or we can go ahead right to mainnet. I'm going to choose mainnet here. And this is going to now ask us what client mode we want. So Rocket, Mo Rocket Pool gives us the ability to say, hey, I already have a, a, a consensus layer running. I already have an execution layer running. Maybe I'm running Geth or something like that already. And I, I want to just connect Rocket Pool to that. We don't have any of that right now. So we're going to make this all locally managed. We're going to allow the smart node, which is what Rocket Pool calls this entire process. This is setting up a smart node. Um, we're gonna let the smart node do its thing. So this is gonna make everything a nice little Docker container for us and allow us to basically manage it all through Docker, which I'm curious to see how this goes. So I'm gonna say locally managed. Now it's gonna ask us what execution client we wanna use. Remember I mentioned we need an execution client and we also need a consensus client. So the execution client for those who've ran a node in ETH1, it may sound familiar, things like Geth, right? Geth is a pretty popular one. Um, now there are, they are saying keep this random, this is recommended because we're trying to keep the network kind of, um, uh, what's the word, like heterogeneous, right? To keep keep different clients uh, running so it's, it's more distributed. Um, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go against this. I'm gonna put Geth because honestly I've used Geth before and I'm a little bit more familiar with it. Hopefully, I'm not the same as everyone else and everyone's just running Geth. But I'm gonna go ahead and choose Geth. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I am not crazy familiar with the consensus client, so now it's asking us what consensus client we want to choose. Um, we can go random. I did read about these uh, to, to a good extent, and it seems like most of them have very similar features. Um, one feature that I, I liked was this idea of a doppelganger protection. So one of the, one of the uh, risks with running a node is if you have a backup node and that comes online at the same time of your production node, you can get slashed pretty bad and you can get some fees, uh, take, you basically get, get fined for doing that. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. And I think that's a pretty cool feature. It seems like I think all of these, except for 
Keku. I could be wrong. If, if there's any uh, um, anybody that knows better than I in, in the comments, please let us know. But um, I think I think every, every, everyone else does. But I'm going to choose Lighthouse here because it seems like um, from what I'm reading, this is I'm, I'm digging the team behind it. And I think that it makes sense. Again, hopefully I'm not, um, you know, adding to the uh, uh, to the problem here of everyone running the same software on the network. But I am going to choose Lighthouse. Now, custom graffiti. So every time we're able to validate a node as our validator, if we're running a validator, we're able to validate a node, that block will have a custom graffiti in here. This is kind of a cool little feature that allows us to kind of put a tag into whatever we verify. So I'm going to put here, I'm just going to put LIBC. So we know that Long Island blockchain has validated this block. Awesome. Now this is going to allow us to set up sync checkpoints. This is, I think, if we have um, a, a consensus client that's already running that we trust, um, we can grab the uh, the state from that. We don't have that, so I'm going to keep this blank. Uh, and this is the doppelganger protection. So yes, I think I think we do want to set this up. So this is a uh, this supports doppelganger protection, and yeah, so I'm going to keep this on. So hopefully, if if you're watching along and playing along with me here. Uh, you can see this is pretty simple. This is going through this uh, this just little wizard here. So this, what is this asking? If you have external, if you have extra externally managed execution and consensus client pair that you trust, you can use them as a fallback clients. The smart mode, smart node, and your validator client will connect to these if your primary execution and consensus clients go offline for any reason. Okay, well that sounds like a nice feature. Unfortunately, we don't have that yet, so I'm going to say no. Metrics. Ah, this is cool. So I saw that they they did this. I think this is a, a Grafana dash. Yeah. So it yeah it says it right here. So would you like to enable smart node metrics monitoring system? Um, it also enables the Grafana dashboard to quickly and easily view these metrics. So Grafana is a real cool open source project that allows you to create analytical dashboards. And from some of the YouTube videos I've been watching for for folks that have set this up. Um, they look pretty cool and they look like a really cool kind of way to just, you know, take a peek at it every morning and see how, how your node's doing, um, if it needs any, any love or how much it's earning. So I'm going to say yes here. And I think we're all done and let's go ahead and review all settings. Um, execution client, fallback clients. Oh, so there's all these different settings. So, uh, Craig was was mentioning some things about MEV boost the other day, and I it, it, this seems interesting. Um, okay, so this is going to tell us where our data. So I I, I also um, have our Linux server configured so that we have mount paths that make sense for larger drives. So I made sure that the home directories where I'm putting all this information has enough data to be able to store um, a sync, which I think right now is about uh, a terabyte or so. So I'm going to keep this all the same. Uh, we'll probably want to go in and look at some of this. So this is all of our get stuff. I do have all the firewalls configured and all that to be able to, to do this. Um, custom graffiti. Awesome. So we can go in here. Nice, nice. Expose API port. We don't have that exposed, which is fine for now. We don't have any fallback clients. MevBoost. Um, uh, so this will connect to a relay of your choice. Access of relay. Okay, awesome. Between you and professional block builders that find and extract Mev opportunities. This is going to be some interesting stuff in the future, and I'm curious to play around with this where there's going to be folks that are really sophisticated that are able to and they are, they're doing that now right they, this um, maximum extracted value uh, to be able to to get value out of each block if they can figure out how to how to put the blocks or, or the transactions in the blocks in order in certain ways uh, super interesting topic and um, not something we're going to set up right now so monitoring metrics we're going to enable that um, good, good, good. That looks good. Add-ons, graffiti wall writer. Oh, this is cool. I'm not going to turn it on right now, but awesome. Um, 
Excellent. Okay, so now I think we're good. So review changes and save. And I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this, right? Now, how do I go back here? So open the config, view changes and save. Okay. Please review the changes below. Updated to smart mode will affect several containers. The following containers must be restarted. Save settings. Would you like the smart? Yes, I do. I want to start them automatically. Okay. So I, I, I haven't pulled any Docker containers yet, so it's saying it can't restart them because, uh, yeah, I don't have one yet. So I'm going to say I do understand that. And there we go. So now it's creating volumes. It's going out and pulling the Docker images. So we're going out and pulling it down Lighthouse right now. And there's the get client. There's Grafana. All right. And I'm thinking that the end, the end of this is going to be, um, we're not going to actually be staking anything just yet, but we, we will be running the nodes um, and they, I believe they should be syncing. So now it looks like everything is down. Now, if I do a Docker PS, there we go. We've got a bunch of Docker containers running. Um, now I do, um, So here is where all of our data should be syncing to. So this is going to now contain, this should be our chain data. Okay, awesome. So now if we do this again, and let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at Lighthouse. So we're going to go ahead and go docker log slash follow rocket pool. Let's look at validator which is going to be lighthouse and there we go you can see it's sinking no validators present see lighthouse account validator create okay so now we are ready to go in and try to create a validator I believe but I'm not going to do that just yet I do want to do a little bit more research um, and see what what the logical next steps are here but um, we can, and let's look at our, uh, do, do, do. let's look at our ETH1 node. And there we go. We are, we are looking for peers and we're sinking. So this is running. Awesome. So I think we are in good shape. Uh, I'm going to let this cook for probably a day or so. And, um, and while that's cooking, I'm going to do a little bit more reading. But I did want to capture this. If anybody's interested in this stuff, um, it, you know, leave a comment. I'd love to, love to talk about it. And um, we've got a lot to learn here. So I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, guys.